Hey there, it's Sunday morning and I just released the video on gearifying my bandsaw. I took the belt drive off and I made aluminum gears and I put on there instead. Just as a test, just to satisfy my curiosity on the point. I'm going to keep it for now, okay? I said in the video I wasn't sure and I also said in the description, if you read that, that I was going to rebuild the motor mount. But at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because right now I have to plug it in into the wall to turn it on. I think I'm just going to wire the, the switch back in and that I have originally for the original motor, which is still right there and still hooked up. But uh, yeah, it'll make it a little bit more convenient. And also I'll be able to, you know, do an extended test on it. Actually, I had an extended test yesterday where I was out here cutting a lot of small parts on the bandsaw and everything worked fine. The only drawback, well, okay, there are a couple of drawbacks. There are two things that make this less than, um, well, a little bit less better <laughs> than the, the, the belt drive. First, it's, there's a little bit more vibration that transmits up through the table, okay? That is not that big of a deal for me, okay? Tools, you know, they're, they're made for doing things and I don't care if it vibrates a little bit. You know, I'm not like, this is not a Ferrari, it's a bandsaw, okay? My experience using it boils down to about, I don't know, 50, 60 times a year. <laughs> so it's not like a, it's, it's a deal breaker with a little bit of vibration. Anyway, so the other big thing though is the amount of noise. And I'm just going to plug it in here so you can, you can hear it with, like with, in comparison to me talking. So that's how loud it is. Now, I don't have a sample. I don't have a sample of it before. Not direct comparison to my voice. I mean, it's been in a number of videos, of course. But I, I would guess that it's about twice as loud as it was. But once again, you know, I was out here, like I said yesterday, I spent almost an hour with this running. And I really should have had hearing protection on, but I didn't. And I mean, if that, like, before I wouldn't have to do that. I wouldn't have to even think about using hearing protection. But this is loud enough to push it up into that range. So that's the only other big drawback. But like I said, I'm going to leave it as it is for now, just to test the long-term long -term durability of it. Okay? Now... Okay, I should talk about the title of this video, <laughs> my, my free energy. <laughs> I watched Matthias Randall's video this morning on debunking another um, free energy device. I found that interesting. And uh, it made me think that I have my own free energy situation here, thanks to a big ice storm <laughs> that I had to end March. March went out like a lion <laughs> and knocked down a bunch of trees around here, knocked out the power, my electricity, for a solid seven days. Not a, there wasn't even a flicker in that seven day period when the power came back on. There was so much damage that happened around here. Anyway, so while I was going on, while I was sitting here uh, inside with, um, nothing to do basically to, than to think. I got to thinking about how I could, I, could, um, I could make it so that that's not an issue as much anymore. Okay, my house is small, it's easy to heat. Basically what I was doing to heat it was running the gas stove in my kitchen. Now, if you're a Patreon, if you're one of my patrons on Patreon, you've heard all this before, but I'm repeating it for the people who aren't, okay? so. Yeah, I turn on a burner on my stove, my gas stove, and that would basically heat the house enough so that it wouldn't be terrible, okay? And then the time of the year, was it was the end of March going into April. Well, the beginning of April, you could say. So it was warming up a little bit, but okay, ice, as in ice storm, 
and uh, the end of March equals not warm enough. So a little bit of heat from the stove. The biggest problem I had was occupying myself. Now, I, you know, did some stuff. Obviously, I couldn't come out here into the shop and uh, do anything. I need power, right? <laughs> but the big thing that I miss was like the internet. I don't do anything on my phone. I have a cell phone. I don't do anything on the phone. I don't do any internet on the phone unless it's an emergency. I have to use it. I have a computer in my living room that I use all the time. Um, you know, I watch videos. I watch shows. I do all kinds of stuff. I design stuff. You know, everything happens basically in my living room. I sit in my easy chair. I got the big 55 inch TV screen. That's the monitor hooked up to the computer. And I couldn't use that because the power was out. Now, I should say that I did have a backup for that. Like I've got a about seven years ago, I bought a big inverter, a 2000 watt inverter that I connected to a deep cycle battery that would give me about five hours of backup on that. And usually power goes out for no longer than, you know, half a day or even a day. So what that gave me was the, the opportunity to shut down anything that I was working on properly and I wouldn't lose my work, right? So I said to myself while, <laughs> while sitting in the dark, reading, you know, I don't know, I read seven books while the power was out. I love reading, so that's no problem. But uh, thinking about what I could do to, to um, alleviate the problem of losing the power, I decided that solar would be something worth looking into. So as soon as the power came back on, I started researching that and I ordered some stuff on Amazon, some solar panels, and I got those set up in my backyard and wired into the old inverter. Now the old inverter was 12 volts, which was fine for what I was using it for, for a quick backup. But for anything, well, I can't call my system serious. It's not a serious solar system. The serious solar system would be like 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 watts. Okay, what I've got out there right now is 1200 watts, which is just sized just enough to charge the two 280 amp hour batteries that I have that I bought that will give me backup for um, enough time so that the solar can kick in and charge them up again. That's the, the whole... Um, idea behind the system that it be perpetual. It doesn't need input from the from the grid. It runs constantly through solar and battery. When this when the sun goes down, the batteries kick in, keep the inverter going. Next morning, the sun comes back up again, charges up the batteries again. So it's perpetual, like I said, it keeps going. And if I have a power outage, I still have that. And what that's connected to is the computer in my living room, like I said, the stove, I said it's a gas stove, but it needs electricity to run the oven. Okay. And the fridge, <laughs> seven days without power to the fridge means everything inside of it is basically garbage, right? So I got the fridge running, I got the computer running in my living room, and I've got the stove running in the kitchen. And that's basically all I need for an extended power outage. Okay. And in the meantime, I'm saving some money because energy from the sun is the only real, well, wind too, only viable for a small operation like this source of power to run things. Okay, so that's my free energy <laughs> thing. Nothing is free, of course, because I had to buy all this stuff and, you know, set it up and get it all working. So time involved, money involved, but what it's putting out, while it's not a huge amount, will make the next power outage a lot less of a burden. Mulder, it is such a gorgeous day outside. Have you ever entertained the idea of trying to find life on this planet? I've seen the life on this planet, Scully, and that is exactly why I'm looking elsewhere. <laughs> 